How's it going guys? This video is titled how to write a song for beginners. So you're familiar with this channel. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I like to work in logic and I like to produce songs. This video is going to take away all of that because it's how to write a song for beginners. I didn't want to just jump into logic here, make a beat, find a cool synth progression, start with a complicated bass line or something because that's not what it's about for beginners. When I started writing songs, it was just my acoustic guitar and me not really knowing what to do. So let's write a song in today's video. I'm not I'm not sure what the song is going to be, and we might even not get it all the way there. Like that's what happens when you write a song. You never really know what's going to come out of it, what's going to come out of a songwriting session. But the point here is I'm going to go through how to write a song from the perspective of just having the acoustic guitar. So we're going to bring out the guitar. You can use a piano. But the idea is it's just a simple chord progression focusing on the melody and the lyrics, not worried about the production yet. Often I find that there is just a lot of focus to jump into the production right away without actually remembering that it is about a song that should be really performed well. Like good songs, the production doesn't matter. It, it, the focus is on the melody and the lyrics and the feeling you can get. If you can play a song just on the acoustic guitar and you get a feeling, well, you know, if you produce that song up, it's going to be probably even better. Step one would be we need to find a chord progression. I'm going to play one on my guitar a little in a, in a second. Here's the thing, though, if you don't know how to play guitar or you don't know how to play piano because you can easily do this on piano and follow along with this as well. If you don't know how to play either of those, then I would recommend like getting a friend to do it and doing a collaboration. Or if you don't have any friends, that's okay too. You can go to Logic and just go to the loop section here and look for a, for example, let's just look for a piano or let's stick with acoustic guitar. And we can do any of these just to get us going. This doesn't need to be the song, but it's more the thing just to get us going. So go through these loops here and try to get a vibe and then we're going to write to that. It's not about the production right now. It's not a, it's not about finding the perfect thing. Picking the chord progression shouldn't be that hard, especially if you're a beginner because you can just choose a chord progression that's in any other song. You could literally go to um, ultimateguitar.com, look at your favorite song and take that chord progression. That's one thing you can do. Another thing is just look up this online. It's called 17 chord progressions that might just change your life. Wow. Look at these chord progressions. They are they they also break them down into kind of mood, sweet and cheerful, happy days, just floating around pop tastic. So if you want to write a pop song, you can look at one of these chord progressions. Just take a look at that on Google. So the first step is finding a chord progression. Literally just choose the one that I put up on the screen there and just choose one, whether it's like a G D C or a E, A, B, it, it doesn't matter. The, the step one is important to just stick with something. Okay, so step, step two, once you've chosen your chord progression, and I'm gonna choose a popular, a five, six, four chord progression. So it's something like this. An easy trap to fall into when you are writing by yourself, um, especially with your instrument, is just to fall into the trap of this kind of vibe. Because we don't have, um, we're following our internal tempo. And if you wanna write a, a solemn, s slow song like that, that's fine, but often, and I fell into this trap at the beginning is you just follow that internal rhythm you have. So if you're doing like a G and you just pick up the guitar and you start playing as you would normally play. That's a trap. So one way to get out of that trap is by using a metronome. So this helped me a lot when I was a beginner and you just choose, I have one on my phone and you just choose a tempo that's faster. Like let's try 110. And that's going to get us right out of that space. So I can just take my chord progression and follow this tempo. So 
So that will get you completely out of the box. So that's step two is find a rhythm and then stick with it. Step three is if you're if you're finding this a struggle to pick a rhythm or to pick a, maybe you're not as a strong uh, of a guitar player yet or a piano player, what can help is, and if you don't like playing into a metrodome, which is fine, you can get up on Logic a drummer track or any, uh, you know, any drum track loop you have in your DAW and play to that beat and then make the tempo, uh, your BPM in your DAW try 100 try 110 try 120 try 150 like it doesn't matter you whatever rhythm you set that's going to get you out of your comfort zone to write a fast song if you want to write a fast song then write to a fast beat step four is we actually are going to start writing the song right now and i've chosen my chord progression i have the tempo at 110 and now i'm going to play through this chord progression and i'm going to be thinking of uh, mentally about three different sections verse pre-chorus and chorus those pillars and i'm going to be humming different words out and mostly humming different melodies not not really focused on the lyric yet humming different melodies in those three groups verse pre-chorus and chorus and as i make my way through that if i find something i like i'm going to record it as a voice memo and then i'm going to check that off as either a verse pre-chorus or chorus and then i'm going to keep doing that until i have those three different pillars with three different melodies. From then on, we can go for lyric. And what often happens in this stage is while you are humming and, and saying nonsensical things, you might say a word and that word can be a guiding point to when we start writing lyrics. I'll just get the tempo in my head right now because I don't want to have the metronome playing over this whole video. So just get the, getting the vibe of the tempo to da ba. Okay, so that's the vibe. Okay, now let's go. I've been waiting for this another day long. It up the mountain dawn. I've been waiting for love and I don't see them love. I don't know where to go, I don't know where to go along. I didn't see where to fall along. They don't want that to go, they don't want to we want along. But it's another phone, it's on another phone along. But I don't know where to go, they don't want to devil so That could be a verse melody. So I would grab my voice memo and keep in mind this part of the stage when you're writing a song, nothing is gonna sound amazingly good. So you can't be so hard on yourself that the idea sounds like crap. So I'm not gonna use it because you can go down a spiral where, where every idea is gonna sound like crap. And then in three hours time, you have nothing. The challenging part about songwriting is to take little ideas and keep moving with them because they're stepping stones to other ideas that might come down the road. So that little, melody that I recorded. I'm going to record that in and move on. That might lead me to another really cool melody. I don't know where to go. I don't know where I'm coming from. But I've been feeling fun. And in the world alone, heaven not coming down alone. But where did you ever know to see? Everyone I wrote is on coming down. I don't know where to go. Feelings that came along alone. That's a nice verse. Now let's move into a pre-chorus. So coming in from that, where can we where we where can we go? And uh, part of this is how I'm singing these verses is I'm I'm humming to things. I'm using all the the baggage that I have from listening to music, writing my own music and feeling the mood of this chord progression and just just feeling it really. A big part of that is using the musicality you have inside of you without trying to be too like hippie about it. Uh, it's it's part of it. A big part of this is like a feeling thing. Uh -huh. Pre-chorus. 
Hit me up, hit me wet I don't know where you call me I know It's the same every time When we go, we're in love And I know But I've been running, running, running for you I've been sawing on me all I do But Now, where, where, where am I going there? So coming into a pre-chorus that I thought was interesting and that I kind of just went into a potential chorus there. Now I'm hitting notes that don't sound good. That's because I really haven't really picked the key that's in that register of my voice. So I can always go down a key when that song, when the song is starting to develop. But I think that pre-chorus idea was interesting. And if I can remember it, that means it's probably probably a good thing or probably a catchy melody so I'll record whatever I can try to remember here hit me up hit me round I don't know where you're going to sound oh heaven don't and away I know fair and the song and I know like a post chorus Back to the verse. So having that in there now gives me at least some direction. It might not be where I'm gonna go with this song, but now I have a direction. Okay. I also was singing, I don't know what I'm gonna do. That's not the greatest lyric, but it gives us like a placeholder for a melody to input some other lyrics. And that might be a bit less stock, uh, and something a bit more, a bit more than that, but it gives us a placeholder. The next step would be to play through the verse that we've recorded and the pre-chorus chorus melody that we have on our phone and to play through that, just that little, those two, three different bodies and see how it feels together. Notice how each section contrast in the melodies a little bit in terms of the choppiness versus a little bit more laid back. Pre-chorus gets a bit more then chorus maybe there's two maybe the melody now is is um is catchy and there's contrasting in the melody, but it might, some of the melodies might be too busy. There's gonna be a lot of lyrics when we get to the lyrics. It's okay to keep moving though, that's the thing. Just keep moving, there's, there's a lot of songs to be written. And I'm very much a songwriter that I'd rather keep going instead of getting so stuck on an idea and just bashing your head against the wall for hours. So, because in an hour from now, we might have written a song and if it's not good, that's okay we can write another song and we can keep doing that. Of course, there's a time where you want to make sure that you're putting enough behind the idea, but after you've written hundreds of songs, you know where you can put on the gas and then you, where you have the break too. The next step would be writing lyrics. So because um, if I have my computer, I would write on my computer. If I have a notepad, I'll write here. Since I have my phone here, I can just start writing lyrics. So I have those melodies in my head. Now is the time to start not nonsensical saying things anymore, but trying to pick those guiding points of what I was saying in, in those three pillars. See if we can attach to it in some capacity. For example, I don't know what I'm gonna do is a, you know, a feeling of being lost 
And so maybe that feeling of being lost is a guiding point to write a song. So the verses could be starting to tell that story about not knowing maybe who you are or being being lost and, and, and trying to be comfortable with that feeling about being lost. Every morning I wake up and I don't know what to do. You know, every morning I wake up and I don't know what to do. That's a lyric. I mean, it's not very good, but it's a stepping stone, right? Every morning I wake up, I don't know what to do. But I put on my day long everything I'm going through. Every morning I wake up, I don't know what to do. Oh. Every morning I don't know what to do. Cause I put on the clothes and I put on my bake, I'm going through. So trying to find a, a rhyming structure with the lyrics now. So every morning I wake up, I don't know what to do. I put on my, you know, what your, whatever morning routine you have. I put on my makeup or I put on my clothes. Think about all the things I'm going through. Now, sentences aren't gonna make so much sense at this stage because you're trying to fit the syllables into the melody, you're trying to stuff words into the melody while thinking about the rhyming structure. Do and through, that could be a rhyming structure. But when I'm feeling right, all the things that I feel in my new. Could have a different rhyming structure here, or we could continue the same, same one. All the time that I had, I was running for something to do. But now I'm running, running, ooh, ooh. Chasing something, something, ooh, cause I don't know what. Or running, running, running for something. Using these words as guidelines, cause I'm running, running, chasing for something, something, or hungry for something, or I like to get these, these kind of level two, like tier one was just random nonsensical melody. Tier two is like act, putting actual words in the place. And, and then tier three for me is going through and editing those words and finding better lyrics. And some people can skip that tier two phase if they're actual solid lyricists. I consider, I don't consider myself a strong lyricist and I need that tier two level to have like another placeholder words. Like I'm running, running, chasing for something, something. That's a chorus and that's that, those are real words and that's fine, but it's not necessarily maybe the best that I can do or that I want to publish, right? One thing you can fall back on if you don't consider yourself a very metaphorical writer is just to write casual, English, like what people would say on an everyday basis. Then when you're finished, record it out in a voice memo like I did, remember, remembering the tempo, remember, remembering the mood and the feeling, and just leaving it there. Then try the next day to pick up your instrument and sing the song back. How much can you remember of the song? This is also a really good test to see if the song was worth it or not to measure its catchiness really and its memorab memorability. Because this is actually what Paul McCartney and John Lennon did when they first started writing songs together was there was no recording devices that they had this easy, like on, on they didn't have phones and this kind of easy access to recording. So what happened was when they would write a song the next day, if they couldn't remember it, well, they were like too bad, like probably wasn't a good enough song then. So can be a good test to do if you can just try to remember the melody and, and the song the next day to see if it's if it's worth pursuing even more. Once you're fully done that and if it's memorable, this is the time where you would put it into logic, put the voice memo, start a beat and start producing and making the song like that. It's just one way to go about writing a song. It doesn't mean you should start writing a song like this. It doesn't mean you shouldn't start writing a song with a beat or with music. This is just one approach and an approach I do probably half the time, the other half is I'm actually working right and starting right away in Logic. That's how to write a song for beginners. I hope this inspired you to write your own song. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.